Live from KSA 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Tuesday, May 12th, and I'm tracking a few little storms here on the KO KSAT weather app up on the north you side. You don't the have the app. You really should download it because you'll get a lot of notification and interesting information, and you're going to be wanting to use that a lot of the next few days. No doubt about that. Justin is standing by with the very latest as he watches us live here on KSAT 12. <laughs> Hi, Justin. The, from the studio. <laughs> hey, do you remember I don't, sometime in the last year, I begged and pleaded with Bob Iger from Disney personally. I know, he finally listened to you. Finally, to release <laughs> Hamilton on film because they actually filmed the original cast over a number of days in New York City years and years ago. So it's been in the can and they were actually, they were going to release it theatrically. Yeah, and here's the thing for you, because of your influence, and we're so grateful for that, Mark, you know, thank you for all that you've done, but because of you, yeah. it's going to premiere in theater, well, uh, July 3rd, they're going to release it on Disney Plus on right. July 3rd, which is a Friday. So it's originally set to hit theaters, uh, which had nothing to do with me, October right. 15. But yes, they snuck it into Good Morning America this morning. Bob Iger was on, and then Lynn Man Man Manuel Miranda came on, mm -hmm. said it will be released, uh, the theatrical version, on Disney Plus the day before Independence Day. They make an announcement. Uh, Iger said, I can't think of another work of art in the last decade that's had the cultural impact of Hamilton. He said, I think it's brilliant, and in these times, to tell the story of people uniting together against forces of diversity, I think it's quite relevant and actually quite important. So here's what we didn't know. We knew it had been, they filmed the original cast, but they actually filmed it over three days back in July of 2016, but it's everybody on there. The original cast, they're all in it, yeah. and one of the things I thought was great, he said, just imagine having the best seat in the house. It's a, this is watching it from home. You're getting it from the director of the actual show, and he knows exactly where to put the camera. I can't wait to see all the original folks. And you've I was, seen it. I caught it, I was lucky enough, lifetime changing moment, to see it in, in London, but I can't wait to see Lin-Manuel and everybody else that, of course, Hamilton received a record 16 nominations back in 2016 at the Tonys and won 11, including Best Musical, but many people consider it to be a national treasure. Absolutely. Mark your calendars. Friday, July 3rd. You have to have Disney Plus, though. Right. There's that. Let's take a look at your rundown. The White House making the historic decision to separate the president and vice president. We can talk on the phone. The no. temporary separation coming after a Pence aide and one of the president's personal valets tested positive for COVID-19 last week. New video of this Texas park packed with people and then gunfire. Oh, oh, you did go, go. More than 400 people filling the park in Fort Worth. New details in the Ahmaud Arbery case. He's the unarmed black jogger shot in Georgia. The murder investigation is now getting its fourth lead prosecutor. A local COVID-19 infectious disease team is starting the second stage of a clinical trial for a new coronavirus drug. The drug being studied is called remdesivir. Officials in Hawaii are considering taking photographs of all visitors flying into the state. That's because the state has had a problem with people ignoring its mandatory 14-day quarantine for all incoming tourists. But the college board adjusting to the times. It's giving the advanced placement exams online for the first time ever. These AP exams are shorter than usual. If you haven't received your stimulus check yet, to get it via direct deposit, tomorrow is the last day to submit your bank account information to the IRS. After that, you have to wait for a paper check, and that could take weeks. The MLB owners have agreed on a proposal to start the 2020 season in July. Games would be played in home stadiums without fans in the stands. An engineering major just made history at Princeton. Nicholas Johnson is the first black valedictorian in the university's 270 four-year history. The squirrel expanding its horizons in Pittsburgh. Its nose was buried in a tiny book. The shot was taken by a college student. She's been staging the animal performing human activities. It's been keeping her busy, maybe driving her a little nuts. <laughs> Kenneth went there. We would never, ever do that. Oh, no. We ever don't do bad puns around the, here. Never. Nope. Fingers are crossed. Yeah. Please notice. Yeah. Mm. I'll stick you outside with live cam. Boy, it's been busy in the weather department today. Yeah, we've had some rain. This this is welcome rain. We've got some good numbers here across San Antonio. We're going to share those rainfall totals with you coming up. We've been tabulating them. And the radar is still pretty busy right now. Let's jump right in and show you where the rain is at this moment. Uh, most of it on the north side of San Antonio right now. We're also seeing some activity up along I-35 near San Marcos. We'll zoom in a little bit closer here. You see right there along 281. Uh, medical center area over towards uh, 281 and 1604. That's where uh, there's a pocket of heavy rain at this hour. 
Also seeing some more development back out over towards Medina Lake and back into Medina County. Pretty heavy sell right over Bulverde. This is moving up 281 towards uh, Highway 46 there into Comal County. That's going to drop some heavy rain here over the next 30 minutes or so. And you see the lightning strike, so this is electrical as well. Another swath of rain that's moving up by 35 just pushed through San Marcos. Also some rain along I-10 as you go east of Seguin. Quick check, a trans guide there. You see there are wet roads. We've had some places where the water's piled up a little bit, so just be careful out there. And temperature-wise, 66 Bernie State, 69 Tarpley, 71 at Hondo. Forecast for today, we're going to taper off the rain chances a little bit midday, but it, we should see some regeneration of some showers and storms this afternoon. Temperatures only the low 80s, and we've got more rain chances down the line. Some pretty good chances, I think, as we get into Friday and Saturday. We're going to discuss all of that coming up here in just a few minutes. Guys. And with those lingering rain chances, the chances for more fender benders, major and minor accidents does continue here in the Alamo City area. Looking live at 410 and Jackson Keller. Wet roads just about everywhere on Transguide this morning. Top stories that we're following for you today. San Antonio police are looking for the person accused of robbing a man at gunpoint last week. Yeah, they say they happened Friday on the northeast side of town. Officials say the victim walking on Higgins Road near Stahl when someone in a white SUV drove up and the driver pulled out a gun demanding his belongings. These are pictures of the suspect's vehicle. Victim says the front license plate was being held in place by one screw, causing it to point towards the ground. If you have any information that could lead to an arrest, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. And of course, you could be eligible for a reward of up to $5,000. This morning, Alamo City is expanding coronavirus testing to everyone. City officials say people without any symptoms for the virus will be able to receive a test. The director of Metro Health, Dr. Don Emmerich, says that the change in testing is important because between 20 to 25 percent of the general public could be asymptomatic. The number breakdown of cases in the city will also start including those who get tested without showing any symptoms. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says the walk-up testing sites will be opening this week on the east side of town. Have any questions, call the city services hotline 311. Coming up later today here on KSAT, an exclusive interview with Governor Greg Abbott. One of the things we'll be talking with him about, coronavirus testing at nursing homes. Governor Abbott said yesterday 100% of residents and staff at nursing homes across our state will now be getting tested. He asked multiple state health agencies to come up with a plan to do so based on guidance from Vice President Mike Pence and Dr. Deborah Burks. Governor Abbott says testing everyone in nursing homes will ensure that any potential breakouts of COVID-19 are quickly detected and contained. It comes after another outbreak was confirmed at a nursing home on San Antonio's southeast side. Sources tell us at least 16 residents and staff have tested positive for COVID-19 at the Rio Admission Trails. Our exclusive interview with the governor happening around 1230 today. You can watch it live coming up on KSAT 12 News at noon. And moving on to your morning headlines, the president's tax returns are the subject of an argument before the Supreme Court today, and a case in Oklahoma includes a lot of luck. Inmates trying to infect themselves, but why? And we take a deep dive into the video of the day. Let's say good morning to David Sears. Hi, David. Welcome back. Thank you. I like your pink tie. Thank you. You're a fisherman. I am. But you use. But he's like not the Gordon's fisherman. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have a yellow rain slicker or the beard. Wow. No. And they're not frozen. No. Um, do There's you uh, do you use a pole and a lure every time? Oh yeah. Okay, yeah. I got a new method for you. Okay, I'm uh -oh. watching. Be good. So pay attention. You'll like this. First off, there will be a showdown at the Supreme Court today, and it could be one of the most listened to cases in a while. Today, President Trump lawyers will try to convince the justices of the Supreme Court that his tax returns should remain secret. While the president's lawyers try to defend keeping his financial records private, the other side, prosecutors will argue they should be able to see the records. The president has challenged subpoenas for his financial records in every federal court. He's lost every challenge, so this will be his last attempt. His lawyers will argue that the three congressional committees and the Manhattan district attorney who want to see his financial records are just politically motivated. The subpoenas are illegitimate and broad and a distraction for the president of the United States. The committees say they are necessary to write ethics laws, and the DA wants them for a probe into possible financial crimes against the state. Here's the twist to the whole presentation. It'll be done via teleconference. You'll be able to hear it, and so will the president. So get ready for a few tweets while the case is being presented. And watch quick. Police cruiser, pickup truck, tapped, cross three lanes of traffic, guardrail, flips, lands on all fours and continues down the highway. They went for several more miles before finally coming to a stop. Trucks surrounded. 
Officers with weapons drawn. The driver gets out, gets on the knees and then on his face. The passenger also out. You can see this again. The truck is headed for the highway. The officer decides to end it right there. Amazing that that truck was able to keep going after flipping over and riding that guardrail. Two men in the truck stopped, arrested, no word on why they were being chased. All right, let's take you inside a target. This is an employee walking right here with a couple of guys, and then look what happens. They turn to start beating on him, and they get him on the ground, actually break the guy's arm. The reason why they were so upset with that guy, he was kicking them out of the store because they refused to wear their masks. So that's why they went after him. All right, now let's move on to the jail. This is an L.A. County jail. Inmates are trying to infect themselves with coronavirus. This is surveillance video shot late last month. The sheriff says the inmates were sharing bottles and masks. You can see them walking around right there, sharing the, sharing the bottle right there. They were trying to contract COVID-19. Apparently, some of the inmates thought that if they got infected with COVID-19, they would get released from jail. That's not going to happen, but the sheriff did say he saw a 60% increase in the number of cases in just one week. It's sad to think that someone deliberately tried to expose himself to COVID-19. As a result of this behavior from this particular module, 21 inmates tested positive for COVID-19 within a week of these videos uh, being taken. Right now, there are more than 5,000 inmates in quarantine. That's about 40% of the jail's population. The sheriff says all the new inmates are being tested as they enter the jail system. And finally, the video of the day, upper right corner. That is a dude diving into a fish tank inside a Bass Pro Shop in Lee County, Florida. Who says you need a fishing pole in lure, Mark? Come on, you just dive in with them. Some sketchy details on this, though. Don't know who the guy is or when this happened. Bass Pro Shop's corporate response was, this incident is illegal, dangerous, and highly discouraged. We work with law enforcement to investigate all individuals who personally attempt or are involved in such activities. That Apparently, just sounds like a bad Florida. idea on yeah. many levels. Florida, right? Yeah, Florida. Yeah. 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 But I mean, that's a pretty big fish tank in the Bass Pro Shops. They're huge. My first but, impression was the guy was trying to retrieve something off the bottom, but I mean, don't you let somebody know, hey, I dropped my yeah. keys or whatever. Well, he, but he didn't even get to the bottom, did he? It didn't look like he, he got to the bottom. I it looked know. like he just wanted to cool off. I think he just was trying to make a name for himself. Don't try this at home, right? That's one way to do it. Yeah, you definitely don't need expensive poles or tackle for no, that. Just dive on in. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's there. That's Some places there. that's called noodling. Why did you do that? No, and that's just your arm. This is right. Okay. <laughs> have you ever done noodling before? No, I have not. You've I seen have it, not. Though, I take it. Do I look like? No, I have not. All right. Just don't dive in the fish tank in best. I don't eat fish. I'm not yes, going to noodle for him. <laughs> That's right. Like fish. Doesn't zero fish. Thank you, <laughs> Thank David. You so By much. the way, all the guys on GMS 89, we all got haircuts this weekend. So I can tell you, I look very dapper. Thank Good you job, very guys. much. Looking sharp, my friend. Right, 9 11, 71 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. We all need a little something to make us smile right now. From a World War II veteran beating COVID 19 to a unique way to keep food on people's tables. Sarah Costa has a roundup of good stories. Discussing the federal response to the coronavirus pandemic. That's the goal of a Senate committee hearing taking place as we speak. Seeing it's Daryl Forges live with more on that coming up later in the newscast. And the Windcrest Police Department is checking in on senior citizens to make sure they're okay during the pandemic. After the break, why some people want the program to continue even after the pandemic is over. Let's check the Dow right now, and it's up about 45 points, 24,267, or 0.19%. Welcome back. It's now 915. The highest number of COVID-19 cases in San Antonio are among adults between 20 and 50 years old. That's according to the city's COVID-19 surveillance data. That same data also shows people ages 60 and up are at a higher risk of dying from the virus. That's one of the reasons why Windcrest police kicked off a program to protect the most vulnerable seniors. Patty Santos has that story. We have a lot of retired military and retired uh, individuals that live in our city. When Chris Police Patrolman Mark Dumas Do you need anything? Checks up on a handful of retired seniors daily. Hi, Ms. Dini, how are you doing? Okay. You do, you're doing okay today? On this day, it was 83-year-old Adele Dendy. She asked for officers to check in on her. Especially during the pandemic when we are not seeing our friends, um, not participating in our organizations, and are kind of sheltering at home. Just thought it would be a good idea for someone to do a daily contact. How you doing? You doing okay? 
The welfare check program was started shortly after COVID-19 restrictions kicked up in Bear County. We had a lot of elders that were uh, dependent on their family members or somebody checking up on them. They're not able to make it to the store, so they depend on somebody. Well, I'm glad to hear it, okay? He says it takes just a few minutes for the officers to call or drop by. We knock on their door, we call them, and uh, we just ask how their day is doing, how they're feeling, if there's anything that they need. Can you call us, okay? Dumas says right, none's can. taken him up on the offer, but they appreciate the service. The individuals that we check up on uh, see a face every day instead of just being at home without, you know, knowing what's going on. Police say it breaks up their routine, too. Different officers split up the welfare checks between morning and afternoons. Dendy thinks the program okay, should continue beyond the pandemic if possible. There are some other senior citizens who, you know, they, they can't drive, they don't get out, they don't have the flexibility that I do. You be safe. Okay. Bye. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. It's a it's great nice, idea. Nice to see. Boy, just in the last 17 minutes, some of these storms have really ramped up big time. Let's check in with Justin. You said there was a tornado watch. Is that what I heard you say? Tornado warning, but, a warning. but okay. not for the San Antonio area. Let me be clear about that. It's shot in Bastrop on Coldwell County, so pretty much northeast of us. But uh, it just shows you that uh, we've got some stronger storms out there. So let's show you the radar. And you see it's sort of lining up there north of San Antonio. Yeah, you see the action right along 1604 and 281. And then as you go up towards I-35 San Marcos and then off to the east, that's where we're seeing that stronger cell. And it is uh, tracking towards the city of Lockhart, uh, where some of that rotation is. So the severe thunderstorm warning goes until 10 o'clock. That's for Bastrop, Caldwell, Hayes, and Travis County. So uh, again, north of us. And then that tornado warning is for Bastrop and Caldwell County, and that's going to go through 945 this morning. And that is uh, moving off to the north and east. Quite a bit of lightning. And these storms sort of have a history of, of producing some of these uh, st stronger cells here, the, this little uh, ac area of activity. And so we may see some pretty good rain out of this. And certainly you're going to get a lot of lightning, but the, the storm here over San Antonio, not severe, uh, just putting down uh, probably some pretty heavy rain right there along 281 and Highway 46. And this is going to move towards New Braunfels. We put the track around here for you. Places like Canyon Lake just starting to move in now. Uh, Fisher, uh, these uh, heavier storms are going to move in your direction. We've got another little cell back out towards Bernie along I-10 as well. Most of this is north of uh, downtown San Antonio. Still some light rain around here, but uh, most of the heavy storms there across northern Bear County. Another little area of showers down around Beeville. And this is all part of a little circulation that developed out west. It's moving through, and that's what's helping to kick off these showers and storms this morning. Let's take a look at the future cast. And I think a lot of this, as we get into the afternoon, is going to shift off to the east. But we still could see some storms even here around San Antonio. So we're going to leave that rain chance in. I'd say about a 40% shot at seeing some showers and storms. And then uh, that's going to push along I-10 later tonight and move east of us. There is a marginal risk of some stronger storms. Uh, include San Antonio. If you're talking about a scale of 1 to 5, this is about a 1. So this is low end, but there is some potential there. Let's talk about rainfall. Uh, about 13 hundredths of an inch at the airport. Hondo, 38 hundredths of an inch, some good numbers out west, places like Del Rio, out near Devil's River State Natural Area, and then you zoom in here on Bear County, uh, about three tenths of an inch in Alamo Ranch, the rim about half an inch, stints and almost an inch of rain there. So this is great to see. We, we do need the rain, and you look at the time lapse, it uh, came through a couple times this morning, 71 degrees at the airport right now, dew point is at 68. And uh, looking at the satellite picture, we've got quite a bit of cloud cover temperatures, 60s and 70s for the most part, 73 right now in New Braunfels with some rain there. A lot of this is rain cooled air, but we will warm up some this afternoon. In the big picture here, you can see that little rotation right there moving through and then more uh, showers and storms up across parts of Oklahoma and North Texas. So one little disturbance there behind it. We've got more. This pattern lends itself to sort of an unsettled pattern, and I think we could get some more heavy rain as we get into Friday and Saturday. So the forecast for today, 40% chance of rain, as we mentioned. Temperatures up around 83 degrees, southerly winds 5 to 15, and then 87 tomorrow, 90 on Thursday. We'll see some storms out west next, next couple of days, but it won't be as widespread. By the time we get into Friday and Saturday, though, there will be the potential for some more heavy rain around the area. Right now, a 60% shot at some showers and storms, especially Saturday morning. So that's a time frame we'll be watching, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm.
921, 71 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, he lived through the Great Depression, survived World War II, and now beat COVID-19. Sarah Costa has a look at his story and other good news headlines. Coming up next. Pretty common theme around here during this difficult time of the pandemic. Some good news is always welcome. From a veteran surviving coronavirus to how one county is helping families grow gardens for food. Sarah Costa joins us live from home with today's Good News Roundup. We love good news. Good hey. morning, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Good morning. Yeah, no, good news is just the best thing right now. And, you know, World War II veterans, they are truly American treasures. I love these stories. So a World War II survivor, and he's also a famous photographer, he recently also survived COVID-19. His family thinks 97-year-old Tony Vaccaro caught the virus by talking to people in his Queens neighborhood. Vaccaro was an orphan during the Great Depression. He survived the Battle of Normandy in World War two and went on to become a famous uh, celebrity photographer shooting subjects like Pablo Picasso, Georgie O'Keefe and John F. Kennedy. I mean, th that generation, the people that survived the Great Depression are World War II vets. They are just something else. They are true survivors, Mark and Leslie. Yeah, the p for picture that it looks like uh, it's our, this guy we're talking about, the mm -hmm. photographer, is actually Picasso. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. And that's a very impressive, and it just it's goes, we, we need to, every time we find someone like that, listen to them and learn from them. Mm -hmm. Yes, very so. much so. They are true American treasures. Well, moving on, the force is strong at the Minnesota Zoo. Get this, Como Park Zoo oh. in Conservatory has welcomed a new baby sheep. Meet Skywalker, yeah. born on Star Wars Day, which is, of course, May 4th. Skywalker is the first child from his mom named Sunny. He and mom share an exhibit at the park with father, Sylvester, Aunt Drizzle, and grandmother, Aunt Storm. Drizzle. Skywalker is also joined by his cousin, Nimbus who was born just nine days earlier. Aww. Not cute. Aww. That, that's a bunch of moutons, you know? That's uh, Mouton French and sheep. for, yep. Yeah. I, I <laughs> did you know that, Sarah? Did you know Aww. that? I did not, I did not know that, Leslie <laughs> Surprise. Now, now we all know. <laughs> that's adorable, I love that video. Now we all Very cute. Know. Well, also, I, I love this. I think horticulture should be uh, a class in all the education system. This is my favorite class when I was in middle school. So Stark County, which is a county in Ohio, are giving more than just food to kids to take home. Stark County's farm to school program is handing out about 26,000 seed packets to families relying on school lunch programs for their next meal. Officials say the seeds were supposed to go to schools so kids could learn about healthy foods like tomatoes, cucumbers and fruit. Now they hope families can grow a garden at home. Now, it's also going to be a family learning experience because if you've ever grown a garden or grown vegetables or had a, you know, uh, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's seasons. <laughs> what are they called? Where you grow oregano and cilantro. Herbs. Oh, and herb garden. Herb yeah. What is the word I'm looking for? Herb. Herbs. Herb. Herb. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> If you've ever done that, because I, I have, I had a big kale garden at one point. It It's hard. It's it's hard, especially in South Texas. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, all the little bugs that'll get into it and all that kind of stuff. It's it is, uh, and you have to just run, start soil. And yeah, tough run to make it through the summer, too. All right, Sarah Costa live at home with a wrap-up of our good news. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. So good to have her back. It is. 928 right now, 71 degrees. More ahead on GMSA at 9. Keeping students engaged is already hard enough for teachers, and it's even more difficult when teaching virtually. How one teacher in Vermont is using wacky trivia and weekly stunts to keep her kids, or students, I should say, motivated. Over the past few weeks, we've been tracking a bird nest outside one of our photographer's home. You don't want to miss the latest report from our KSAT Kid correspondent, William Caldera. It is one you don't want to miss because the nest is now empty. It's adorable. The heads of the CDC and FDA and others who have been part of the White House Coronavirus Task Force are testifying right now in front of the Senate. CNN's Daryl Forges is live with details of what they're discussing coming up next. Welcome back. It is now 931. 
A Senate committee hearing is happening right now in Washington to talk about the federal response to the coronavirus crisis. They're expected to talk about what federal, state, and local governments are doing to help Americans go back to work, go back to school as rapidly and safely as possible. Seen as Daryl Forge has joined us live right now from Atlanta, Georgia. Daryl, all today's witnesses, including Dr. Anthony Fauci, will testify remotely. How well is that going to work? Yeah, that's right, Mark and Leslie. Good morning to the both of you. As of right now, Dr. Anthony Fauci is speaking as we speak, giving his uh, opening remarks during this remotely. He's just talked about it. Uh, Dr. Fauci, along with several other top health officials, are doing theirs remotely after coming in contact with someone in the White House who tested positive for COVID-19. They're doing self-quarantining as a precaution. But Mark and Leslie, they're not the only ones doing it. Also, uh, Senator Lamar Alexander of Tennessee, who is over the committee chair of this uh, Senate Health Committee, is also running things from his home in Tennessee after one of his staff members tested positive for COVID-19. He actually gave his remarks earlier at what seems as if a historic hearing, because we've never really seen things like this where people are giving their testimony and running the committee and running the hearing from their home. So this is kind of the showing the new signs of the times during this COVID-19 pandemic. There are some uh, lawmakers there uh, on the committee staying six feet apart, social distance, distancing uh, during this hearing, like Senator Doug Jones of Alabama, uh, also uh, Chris Murphy, uh, the Democratic Senator, as well as Senator Tim Kaine. He's actually wearing a mask uh, over his face. So uh, there are, it's very interesting seeing this committee uh, as they're doing this hearing. But the main reason why they are doing it remotely, the four, is because of what happened in the White House with one person uh, or a couple actually testing positive for COVID-19. So this hearing is going to be very interesting and very different from the hearings that we've seen in the past, Mark and Leslie. So what do you think the biggest topics that are expected to be discussed will be at the hearing today? Leslie, that's a good question. I mean, one of the biggest things we're probably going to be talking about is testing. That's been the biggest thing I feel like we've been talking about for the past couple of months, right? Testing, test kits, testing supplies have been a big need all across the country. Now, President Trump has said yesterday, uh, touting the accomplishments of the country, saying that they've really ramped up when it comes to testing and that they're doing 300,000 tests per day for Americans. But according to health officials, Leslie, they believe that in order for states to reopen, there needs to be at least 900,000 tests done daily. Uh, so that's been a big concern. Another thing, as Dr. Anthony Fauci is speaking, he released to the New York Times what he'll be talking about during today's hearing. And the biggest thing that he's urging is uh, for states across the country to urge on the side of caution when it comes to uh, prematurely opening up their country or opening up their states, excuse me, saying, quote, if we skip over the checkpoints and the guidelines to open America again, then we risk the danger of multiple outbreaks throughout the country. Uh, so that's what uh, Dr. Fauci has been uh, previewing what he's going to be talking about today. But it all goes back to testing. And a lot of people have been trying to go to the federal government for help when it comes to testing. And, uh, but at this point, as you all know, the president has been kind of hands off when it comes to testing, really leaving things up to the states. So that's going to be a big issue moving forward, especially with today's hearing. Seeing as Daryl Ford is live right here on GMSA at 9 from Atlanta. Thank you, Daryl. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Daryl. Back outside with live cam. Yeah, it's another wet day. Well, I say another one. It is a wet day. <laughs> we're going to have a few of them. And just as we're getting to you, Justin, I know you have a lot to talk about. Just a reminder, we're live streaming on KSAT.com, the Senate hearings, if people would like to watch them. Yes, there you go. You can check it out. And uh, we're watching showers and storms, as you guys mentioned. This is some welcome rain. Look, it's, it's been a while since it's rained around here. We'll take it. We just don't want any severe weather with it. We do have... Uh, one strong storm out there that we'll uh, get to here in just a second. But first, let's take a look at the radar here around San Antonio. We've got some showers and storms, especially on the north side. But everybody, for the most part, has at least seen a little bit of rain this morning, and that's great. I think the aquifer probably will try to jump up some, too, uh, after this rainfall. There is a look at that uh, severe storm again. This is out of our area. It's not in, uh, in the San Antonio area. This is well to the north and east. But I do, do just want to mention that there is a tornado warning up there around Bastrop and Caldwell County, and there actually was a confirmed tornado at this. You can actually see that on the velocity there, uh, right just to the east and northeast of Lockhart. A little circulation there. Weather Service is watching that, but that is moving away from us. So we're 
uh, not in the line of fire there, so to speak. Uh, meantime, uh, some heavier rain up there around Kenya Lake, north of New Braunfels as well. We're seeing some lightning strikes with that and some, just some good heavy rain here around the area. So we're going to continue to keep an eye on the rainfall, guys. There's a chance through the afternoon, and we'll see uh, some quieter days uh, Wednesday and Thursday before some more rain chances Friday and Saturday. We're going to have more on that seven-day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Check the roads with Trans Guide right now. Things are drying out a bit here downtown. 35 at Chavez. There's 16 to 4 in Claver. Looks like they're trying to dry out as well, but there are other parts of the north side that still are receiving showers at this hour. A teacher in Vermont is engaging with his students and community through daily wacky trivia videos and weekly stunts. Liz Strapa with WPTZ in Plattsburgh, New York, introduces us to this very entertaining educator. There are some teachers who just stand out. He's the best fifth grade teacher. And for these fifth graders at the Heinsberg Community School, their math teacher, Mr. Lasher, has their undivided attention. He's fun. He's fun. He's funny. With school going virtual during the pandemic. Hello, fifth graders from Heinsberg Community School. Paul Lasher is going viral. He's the smallest bone in the human body come here, come here. by posting daily trivia questions to YouTube. The trivia question that Swedish chef asked is who was the first computer programmer? It's a good transition into doing the schoolwork and it's really funny seeing the videos. My deal for them is that I have to get 80% of all the kids in fifth grade to to do the questions and get them correct throughout the week. And then, then on Friday, I'll do something crazy for them. So far, he's waxed his legs, jumped in Lake Iroquois, waved to drivers on Route 116, oh boy. and rocked a rainbow mohawk, all with the help of his wife, Alyssa, and their two sons, Eli and Brady. I look forward to every Friday doing something fun and special that um, really makes our family come together and just have fun together, but also just other people makes them laugh, yeah. which people need right now. Last year's students agree. Yes. Fridays are their favorite for the same reason. Happy Friday. And this week, his oh. dare All right. yeah. couldn't be sweeter. It feels more normal to be able to do something like that and see the kids smile and know that they're smiling, um, know that they're having fun, engaged in the learning. <laughs> They're engaged in his teaching. My question is, what's which so far isn't going out of style. It's not the dance floor when I'm out there. <laughs> Loves his job. The kids are loving that, aren't they? That's so great. That was WPTPZ's Liz Straper reporting. Uh, she works up in uh, upstate New York, but that was uh, in Heinsburg, Vermont, where that teacher was located. Very creative. Speaking mm -hmm. of which, this next guy that we're focusing on, boy, his that community loves him the, for good reason. A tiny Alaskan town grocer being hailed a hero for sailing to Costco for groceries. Seven hour one way, seven hour back, so 14 hour round trip just to pick up groceries for all of the people in his town. It's unbelievable that he does this, and thank goodness he does, right? It said in late April, the grocer set off from, I guess it's Gustafus, is that what you said? Right. In a small uh, barge to the world's most remote Costco warehouse. After seven hours, he reached Juno when he loaded pallets containing $20,000 worth of eggs, flour, meat, canned goods, produce, and we assume toilet paper. So Tashua Parker is his name. Uh, he's the lone grocer up there in Gustavus. And what's required to run his small store called Ice Straight Wholesale, they also fondly call it Toshko, <laughs> which keeps his 446 neighbors there in Gustavus fed. It's a huge challenge in the isolation of the town presents difficulties that only they can understand without electricity or phones until the 80s and mid 90s. No roads can even bring a car into that town. So during COVID-19, he tallies what Gustavus residents need, takes orders by phone, everything from washing machines to eggs, before making his weekly seven-hour journey to the Alaskan capital to stock up at Costco. He has deep family roots in this little town. It first opened his grocery store. Did you just say that 10 years ago? No. Okay, his great-grandfather, Abraham Lincoln Parker was the area's first permanent homesteader in 1917. So he, and he can't reward himself by marking up his prices because everybody knows the prices at Costco, but get this, for a dozen eggs mm -hmm. up in Gustavus, Alaska, he's charging and they accept to pay $7.99 a dozen. But here's the thing, that leaves him $3.50 per dozen eggs to cover the cost of barge maintenance, right. labor, refrigeration, logistical planning, and gasoline. So he's not making a big profit on this. No, so the mayor said, Tosh would pretty much save the town. I really don't know what we would have done 
without him. And he said it's like Christmas when the load gets here. Everyone's waiting for it. Word gets out and they all seem to know when it's coming. So from Costco day. to Toshco. I love it. Up in little Gustavus, Alaska. Seven hours away from Juneau. Wow. Wowza. 942, 71 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. A young KSAT reporter in the making has been started made. He's just a young KSAT reporter for sure. Tracking a bird nest that he found in his backyard and bringing us reports on GMSA for the past several weeks. Well, the eggs have hatched. Our KSAT kids correspondent has one final report on the nest anyway after the break. 9.45, an update this morning from one of our KSAT Kids correspondents. A few weeks back, our photographer Bill Caldera and his son William found a bird nest with five eggs in their backyard of the back porch while they were staying at home. All right, so they set up a live camera. Mm -hmm. It's been on KSAT.com. Now the fledglings have left the nest just two weeks after hatching. William files his final bird nest report. As you can see, I'm in the backyard and I'm by the baby bird's nest. Um, the hatchlings have left, and that gave me the opportunity to be here. We saw the mother bird remove the eggshells as newborns hatched. At first, they were kind of ugly. They had big, bulging eyeballs and bright yellow beaks. They slept and slept. <coughs> Mom and Dad worked all day to bring them something to eat. They searched the grass, flower pots, and all around to bring nutritious bugs back to the brood. When mom and dad brought food back, the baby birds peeped and opened their mouths really wide. We saw the parents reaching all the way in the nest while holding onto the pot with their feet. The baby Carolina wrens grew pretty fast. Soon, mother bird couldn't fit in the nest anymore. At first, their feathers looked kind of like hair. After about a week, they began to get their feathers and grew into their eyeballs. Their nest quickly becoming too small for the fast-growing birdies, ready to stretch their wings. <whistles> On Mother's Day, the first fledgling, Edie, left the nest. And then the next morning, Meanie, Money, and Mo left. You can see the last bird, Mo, hops out and climbs up on the nest. Mo takes a look around, then flies off to the patio, where he hid by our window before taking off. Edie made it over to this rock in the yard. Their brown feathers blend in with the leaves on the ground like camouflage. Sadly, it never hatched. About a week ago, we saw a barred owl hunting larger birds in the neighborhood. As our birdies leave the nest, we hope they make it through the food chain unharmed and return to build nests in our backyard next year. Reporting in my backyard for KSAT Kids, William Caldera, KSAT 12 News. That was brilliant. We smell an Emmy. I definitely do. He is the cutest thing ever. He is. And he's so articulate, and his storytelling is really good. And I like the, From them growing into their eyes. Yeah, growing into their eyes. You know, the, 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 the low-key voice when we find out the, the horrible fate of Fred. Oh, Fred? Yes. They're hopefully going to survive the food the, chain. Hopefully. Hopefully. You know, hopefully. with the owls around. And his so. tie, and his hat, hat and his yes. voice. And you're I mean, hired. I'm not the boss, but you're hired. I, we know you're equally impressed, Justin. Uh, that was incredible. <laughs> so well spoken. I know. I, I just, we just, he awesome. needs a new assignment. This can't be the end. This can't be. So, Bill, Shannon, if you're watching, we need more yeah. William. Yes. More material. Yes, for sure. Uh, guys, we're, we're watching some showers and storms out there right now. Uh, nothing severe around our area. That's the great news. Most of this has just been good rain. We've. Uh, can use this rain for sure. I, I think the aquifer might jump up a little bit. Some of this was over the recharge. But you look at some of the cells here, there is going to be some, uh, yes, pockets of heavy rain and then some lightning strikes with this too. We've seen these uh, storms become a little electrical. Right now, this is right along the uh, Bear Kendall County line. And then as you get into Kamau County, some pretty good rain right over Canyon Lake at this hour. And this is working east and northeast. Now, uh, some of that heavier rain is trying to work towards the Bernie area, right along 46 there. And then uh, right along Highway 16, just north of Holotus, seeing some of that rain uh, move in your direction. And then uh, there's a look at a little closer look at some of that heavier rain over Comal County. We're seeing more lightning strikes with this particular storm as it moves north and east, and that'll bring some rain to parts of New Braunfels and San, Mar San Marcos too. Now, the, the one storm we've been having issues with is out of our viewing area, but uh, we do want to point it out that uh, there are a couple of warnings with this storm, tornado warning, a severe thunderstorm warning. We've been watching just a little bit of a circulation here, and I'll show you the velocity over the last hour, and you can kind of pick it up right there, just east of Lockhart. There was an actual tornado reported on the ground there. 
Uh, we'll see what comes of that. Hopefully there's no damage or anything like that. But again, that is away from us and that is moving away from us. And you see sort of the, the broad picture here. We've got circulation in the atmosphere. And this was moving west east across the area today. So as it continues to move east, it's going to take a lot of the rainfall with it, I think. Still, we'll have some chances of storms into the afternoon, mainly along I-35 and points off to the east. And that's what our computer model is showing here. So by 1 o'clock, we've still got some storms developing. And by the way, we could see a couple more strong storms today. The atmosphere is sort of primed for that. And then as we get into the evening hours, a uh, couple more strong storms, or storms at least, uh, east of I-35. And so the, the chance will be there. I think tomorrow things quiet down a little bit. Severe weather risk today, just a marginal risk. That does include San Antonio. So this is low end, uh, maybe some gusty winds. Uh, there could be some small hail with a couple of these storms. Uh, is observed rainfall. This is the good news, and this is what we like to see. The numbers have been pretty good. About four tenths of an inch there in Hondo. The airport only about 1,300ths hundred of an inch, but we may go up on that depending on where some of those showers and storms may move here over the next hour. And then locally over Bear County, uh, three tenths of an inch LMO Ranch. Uh, the rim about half an inch. New Braunfels a quarter of an inch, and that will go up as that storm moves through your neighborhood. 71 degrees right now. Dew point is at 68. Good south southeasterly winds. Temperatures generally in the 60s and 70s. And uh, some of this is rain cooled air. I do think we'll get into the 80s eventually this afternoon. And then down the line, we've got more chances of rain. This is one little disturbance moving through right now. But as you look back off to the west, there's a few more. And this flow lends itself to getting these little disturbances to roll through and giving us uh, some more chances for some showers and storms, I think, especially by Friday into Saturday. Forecast for today, we'll keep a 40% chance of rain in there, up to 83 for a high, 87 tomorrow, up to 90 on Thursday, and then the rain chances come back Friday evening, and especially Friday night into Saturday. That's where we could see some heavy rain. Temperatures will drop back down into the 80s this weekend. We'll be right back. We love our fur babies. You can now meet and adopt a dog on Zoom. It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. All the meetings that we're doing and how we're communicating with each other now. Um, so let's see. The website, the initiatives, meetyournewdog.com, explains that the idea is to let people virtually meet dogs, ask questions, and adopt without leaving their home. Dog Food Brand Pedigree is working to set up dog adoptions via Zoom with this website mentioned. This week, Pedigree working with an Asheville Humane Society put adoption Zoom meetings on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays at 5 p.m. local time. And you can sign up for the Zoom meetings. We found this article on Mashable.com. And they pay all the adoption fees, yeah. so it's totally free. And they're hoping to actually expand it. Because it, right, it was just Nashville, and it's kind of a you know test run thing. But right. they hope to make it more of a national they, thing. They will, since Pedigree's national. This mm -hmm. week, the brand working with Nashville Humane Society. But they've indicated on their site that more shelters will be coming down the road. I think it's a great <laughs> idea. Give them all a home. I love seeing all the doggies on the, on zoom, the zoom, like they're doing the actual like call. they're doing it. Yeah. It's I can cute. hear my daughter now. I want that one. And that one. That one. That one. Thanks that. for being with us. That one.